What's up guys? I hope yesterday was a really awesome Halloween. Obviously, it's November 1st. That's why I'm doing your cards of November. Um, I had a really good day. I mean, nothing too exciting, but like, you know, I love me some Halloween. Any Anything I'm doing, whether it's like spooky movies or actually going somewhere is like top notch for me. So, with that being said, hopefully everyone's having a good day, bring in some good vibrations. First, I'm going to cleanse everything, do everything up for you. We're gonna have three stones to choose from once I place the cards down. Totally up to you what you pick. If the message does not resonate with you, just move along. Doesn't mean that it won't a few weeks down the road, a few days, maybe it's already happened something like that, or it may never. So whoever is intuitively drawn to the video, normally the message somewhat is for you. See where you can apply it, take what resonates, throw out what doesn't, and it's that simple. I'm gonna light up some Palo Santo, use a little bell. What a lot of people don't know is bells actually get rid of negative energy or any stagnant energy period. And I actually got my first one for this purpose maybe two months ago and it's been doing really good things for me so I highly recommend that. Now for today I am going to allow you to pick your obviously your own deck on top of that, I'm going to do a one card oracle pull with my wild spirit deck. I'm actually getting a new deck because I feel like I'm sick of like looking at the same colors and stuff. I don't know if you guys get that, probably don't care, but I personally do as a reader. Um, woo. And so yeah, I'm just, I'm gonna get that new deck. I love this deck, it's gonna be my go-to probably forever, but I just wanna switch things up, you know? Okay, so before you pick based on your stone or whatever energy you are drawn to, I ask that you guys have in mind a question that you'd like to be answered or a place of guidance you'd like to be shown. We've got some clear quartz. We've got some black tourmaline. I believe this is jasper, some form of jasper. I'm not 100% sure. Normally, tarot readers will tell you to pick one deck, but if you resonate with more, that's totally okay. Sometimes in readings for myself, I like to pick two. Those of you that were drawn to the clear quartz, group number one, here is the message for you. We've got the Mother of Cups, which in traditional tarot is the Queen of Cups. We've got the Four of Wands reversed. And then we have, again, emotional Ten of Cups. So this is a very emotion-based reading. It could be more internal that you're feeling this than external. But overall, we have a woman who is very intuitive, very balanced. She kind of knows what she wants. She's all there emotionally, and maybe sometimes she'll doubt herself, or if somebody bothers, you know, her family aspect of things, she can be kind of bitchy. But other than that, she's a very well-grounded spirit, and kind of that loving, warm energy that you would go to and find in a mother, or a sister, or a grandmother, a very loving energy. Next, we have the Four of Wands reversed. Upright, this is a very good card for marriage and having just that happy, healthy home, the goal we all strive for. Reversed, it's not that it means the opposite, it's just that there's some sort of issue within your communication. So, whether that be at the moment, this is you and you're normally very nurturing and open and loving and you're struggling with having that seen by people. You could be, since it is the breakdown of the fall slash winter transition, you could be in a hermit mode. You could be finding more of your comfort by being inside and not really being around everybody and maybe they're not used to that so they're feeling like a little taken back. Overall, it's kind of a, a break in communication. So 
With it being reversed, I never see them as really negative because within tarot, nothing is written in pen. It's always written in pencil, so you have the power to see what it is that's blocking you and then fixing it. So I'd say to focus on your communication. After this, you do have the Ten of Cups, which kind of contradicts this. This is what you want. You want the happy, healthy home. Maybe you're not feeling it at the moment, but it's totally here for you. You just have to see it. You have to put forth the effort. Maybe other people around you are going through something and then they need to realize that you are their Ten of Cups, that you are their Mother of Cups, and they need to show you the same amount of respect. This can all be interchangeable. Remember, take the reading as it is, but always you can change who it resonates with. If it makes more sense with your partner, it could be your partner. If it makes more sense with you, it could be you. But that's the only thing you should ever change about the reading. Um, so what I want you to realize is that you have exactly what you want here. Your warm, loving energy is going to be seen, is going to be appreciated. And maybe you don't even see it yourself. Maybe you're self-doubting, maybe you're not too sure if you're with the right person, whatever. But if this gets fixed and you communicate with that other person or you communicate yourself, you can have the ultimate fulfillment, which is your 10 of cups, which is your abundance, which is family life, which is love, which is a happy home and kids and pets and all that types of stuff. So now I'm going to do your oracle pull. For this oracle, I'm going to be reading straight from the guidebook to tell you exactly what it says. Sometimes they could tell you to balance a certain chakra. Sometimes they could tell you how to rebalance period or what you need to work on. So I like reading straight from the book with these. Yep, makes perfect sense. What else is new? So before I actually read the book, I'm going to tell you that the crocodile is a very taken back energy. Of course, we have the water suit again. So this is pertaining to your emotions and maybe how you're feeling inside or how people are making you feel. The crocodile is a very quiet creature. It likes to submerge itself in that healing water. You could have just been getting over something pretty intense, maybe a, a shake-up to your life, and that's why you're having so much trouble seeing that you have this potential of bliss and harmony, so you're still in the healing waters, you're submerged in it, and it's not that you can't be submerged in it, and you can't still be cautious of things. I would want you to be cautious, but the thing is, it seems like you're stunting yourself by being overly cautious. I would communicate how it is you're feeling from the past, present, or potential future to this partner or express it yourself, whether that's journaling, whether that's talking to a therapist, whether that's meditation, just express it in some way. So don't feel that you need to be rushed, but just know to turn things around in your favor. It's not that you won't get here, you might just get there a little slower if you don't figure out how to adjust with this. So the keywords are resting, submerging, collecting energy, and cooling off. The crocodile reminds us to step back from the external world and turn inward. Now is not the time for decisions, actions, or discussion. The crocodile's mantra is wait. This doesn't mean lying around hoping life's challenges will disappear. The crocodile is much smarter than that. It means intentionally withdrawing, gathering our awareness, observing, and building energy. Fill up the vital reserves so your next move comes from a place of wisdom and power. So this is all about not being like a queen of swords energy, if you know what I'm talking about. Where you're going to cut somebody's head off, um, where you're going to attack, where you're going to release emotions that aren't balanced and cause a ripple effect of negative things to happen. This is about taking that time that you have been taking and submerging yourself in the healing waters and then changing this communication and communication and communicating from the wisdomous place in your mind from the best place you can rather than being irrational and then you'll get to here. It says when you're balanced you are wise, patient, and a silent powerhouse. When you're out of balance, you feel stuck and you may lash out. So that's exactly what we're trying to avoid. To bring into balance, rest. So I would say what you're doing is exactly the right thing you should be doing right now. Though, as I reminded you, 
try not to stay stuck in it. Be aware of what it is and make sure you're at an emotionally balanced place before you act on it. Okay, my loves, those of you who have picked number two, group number two, here is the message for you. So for you guys, you actually ended up getting a much longer reading than everybody else because the cards just wanted to keep coming out. So I let them. You have five cards here and we start with the Seven of Pentacles, the Wheel of Fortune, Four of Swords, Six of Cups, and the Father of Cups. I'm seeing the same energy as I am as group number one. If you check that one out, if not, totally okay. Still gonna explain everything here. So basically you've been investing your time into something very important to you. And by investing your time into this, whether it's work-related, love-related, or spiritually self-transformation, whatever that case may be, by investing so much time and so much hard work and being so persistent and determined, you actually turn the wheel into your favor. So this is a major arcana card, which is kind of a deep soul purpose rather than anything egotistical or have you. So by doing this work, this spiritual work, this physical work, whatever the case may be, you turn the wheel into your favor. And by doing so, you're being really smart about this. You're going, you're choosing to go into a four of swords state. Now swords are thoughts. And with this one in particular, I kind of do like this card. Um, it's about withdrawal. It's about going into meditation mode before you act on anything. Because the past is here, it could be a decision from the past. And then we have Father of Cups, which is a very emotionally balanced, which is King of Cups in traditional tarot, the Rider deck or something like that. So it could be that you have an opportunity from the past or something comes up from the past and maybe before you didn't act on it correctly and you wish it would have went better or been a different outcome. So now you're trying to go into a meditative state to maybe find the answer of what it is you should do. It seems like a very positive thing. It seems like this is more self-inflicted than it is you being pushed by the universe into this kind of cocoon state. It seems like you want to come out emotionally balanced and act on it emotionally balanced so you don't do anything rash, so you don't regret the decision years down the road, whatever the case may be, you're trying to come at it with a really smart perspective, which I think you are on the right path with whatever it is. With the wheel upright, it seems like this is going to be something positive for you. All right, sorry, back to what I was doing. Got a phone call. Anyways, so I think not only is this signifying you being smart about the, about the turn of events, this is kind of signifying karma, this is what's supposed to happen, not only is this good luck, but this is a fated event. Whatever is happening, whatever is coming back from the past, whatever you're feeling from the past, um, or whatever you're trying to move past, whatever this is is supposed to be happening and is strengthening you emotionally and physically and mentally, all of those things. So not only is what you are being presented something that is good for you as well as fated to happen, but the option is yours, of course, but if you are nervous about it, I think no matter what you do, which direction you go, is the right thing to do, if that makes sense. If you end up having a not so great outcome with whatever it was, in the long run, it's doing you justice. So if that makes sense to you guys, whatever it is that's happening, whether you choose to do it or not, if it doesn't work out, it was supposed to happen that way to get you to better things in life. You guys are presented with the reversed dragonfly. So normally I'm gonna tell you that the dragonfly upright is a very loving, spiritually enlightened type of energy. It's a very godly energy, just like the hawk is or the raven is symbolized for divine presence as well as the dragonfly is that it is illumination it's about 
the divine white light. So because it's reversed, it seems like you might right now not be in the proper headspace to act on this situation, which makes sense because you are putting yourself in the Four of Swords. I think you're already aware that you're not at the right position in your life now to make such a destined decision. So I think this is actually a really good thing and makes a ton of sense to what we were talking about. This is also an air energy, so it's very kind of all over the place, very swift movement. Um, you could be feeling the pull to make a decision right away, but you need to realize that you may not be ready. Your keywords are master of light, illusion, and the mind. Dragonfly is an ancient creature that awakens a sense of wonder in all. The dragonfly is a symbol of the mind as it's always moving, shifting, shimmering, and changing. When the dragonfly card appears, it's worth considering the quality of your mind and perception. Are they restless or still, dreamlike or crystal clear? The situation at hand may be different than it appears at first glance. The dragonfly reminds us to calm the mind so the light of wisdom can shine through. Oh my god, if this doesn't make sense, <laughs> I don't know what does. So when you are balanced, which you are not, but when you shift that around and are balanced, you will see clearly, be joyful and magical. When you're out of balance currently, you can't concentrate and you have a very busy mind. So you could be shifting back and forth between, oh, I should do this, I should do that, so-and-so said I should do this, so I'm gonna do that, and you're not really in a clear space. To bring yourself into balance, focus on your breath. So that would make sense with the whole Four of Swords meditation. I highly, highly suggest doing some meditation practices at the moment. Seems what's gonna best suit you guys. Alrighty, so for my last group of people, my group number three, Black Tourmaline, this is the message you got from Spirit. What I'm seeing with this automatically is money and romance and the lack of time to pursue. We've got the Son of Pentacles, Two of Cups reversed. Two of Cups are emotions. Pentacles normally refer to money. And the Swords are thoughts. We've got the Mother of Swords. So, starting from here, working my way here, I see the Son of Pentacles as a very loyal, hard-working man or woman. Somebody really dedicated to whatever it is, whether it is strictly romance, whether it is money, whether whatever it is, you are very dedicated to this. You are wanting to have things... Um, perfect. I'm kind of seeing Virgo energy with this, interestingly enough. You want things to be this, this, and this. You don't want any surprises. You want to master your craft. I'm seeing a lot of that. You're very focused on whatever it is you're trying to conquer at the moment. Maybe this is why you're feeling with the Two of Cups reversed a lack of romance or love, or you feel like maybe there isn't enough time for love. Um, I see the Two of Cups either as something like that or you're focusing on your own self-love, which they both tie together because if you're focusing on your self-love and you're kind of withdrawn focusing on work or you as a person, you obviously wouldn't be feeling too much romance. You'd be focusing on you. Next to that with the Mother of Swords, I'm getting a sense of an energy who isn't taking any shit. It's very independent person who knows what they want and won't accept any half-ass offers, anything less than. So you could be in independent mode due to work where you are withdrawing yourself and realizing maybe this is a better time to be focused on me than with a lover. Maybe I can't provide everything I can to this person. Maybe it wouldn't be a fair relationship at the moment because I'm so focused on my work and being successful and caught up in it. It could be a sense of somebody wanting a relationship and coming in and kind of causing havoc with this mother of swords and you're kind of like, oh, like you don't know what to do because you know that you wouldn't be in the right space to produce this. Or you could be feeling the lack of love from another person. You could be trying really, really hard to connect with this person, to prosper with this person, and they could be caught up in work. Or they could be kind of a more hardcore energy where they don't want anything half-ass as well. And you're trying to give all you can provide, but maybe to this specific person. At the moment, it doesn't feel like it's enough, or you might feel like you're not doing enough, but 
Rest assured that the Two of Cups being here still signifies the possibility of it to turn around. It's all about mindset. So what are you focusing too much on? Are you focusing too much on being independent and feel a relationship would take your independence away? Do you feel you're focused on too much work and you're not allowing yourself to have this potential happy romantic Two of Cups because you're so determined to do whatever this is? Whatever resonates with you, but I am definitely seeing an energy of independence, of working really hard, and lack of or giving to yourself rather than others. So now I'm going to pull a oracle clarifier for you guys just to see kind of where we're at. You have the deer reversed. Normally upright, the deer is a very nurturing, caring type of person, a very loving, compassionate, warm partner, almost feeling like a mother or a father or a grandmother, that very warm energy that you feel so very comforted by. This could be you or the other person. But since you are reversed, it could be you normally are like this, but you're not necessarily feeling that at the moment. Um, it could be a shock to you or the other person that you are in such a independent, structured mindset on something else other than romance because you're so much usually the warm type of lover. It's normally the way you would describe them is so loving, so caring, so understanding, and they are being very withdrawn and it's making you uncomfortable or vice versa. This is a earth energy. The deer is the earth suit. And normally that's about grounding and stability. And since we're reversed, I would say this is what's need to be brought into your life. Okay, loving, intuitive, graceful, the mother. This is your clarifiers, your keywords. The deer represents the feminine aspects of earth energy. This energy is available to all creatures, regardless of gender, but is especially potent in new parents. During the first few days, they are fully present, nurturing, and calm. Their inner beauty radiates and sense of grace calms the room. A deer personality affects others in this way, drawing them towards a quiet tenderness. The deer card may appear when a birth or celebration of new life draws near, or when a situation calls for absolute gentleness and compassion. When balanced, receptive, compassionate, and nurturing. So this is you or the person normally when out of balance, which is currently, concerned and protective. To bring into balance nature and children. So it's really about this person tapping back into their loving energy. Maybe you are feeling lack of because you are concerned or being too serious with the relationship or with work that you aren't really leaving time to play and this person's feeling neglected or you are feeling neglected. Um, this card overall is still a very loving, warm-spirited energy, but this person is kind of used to you or them being very loving and receptive, and it's such a weird change for them to experience you in any other type of mode, focusing on something hardcore, completely different than what you normally would be. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this card reading. And I will hopefully be back to do one for December. If not, I might do a full card read for my people of November. I hope some of this resonated with you. If not, check back next time to see if it does. You could check back weeks later, days later, or you could just wait for me to put out another card read and the next one might resonate with you. So I hope you guys have an awesome day and See you next time. Bye, guys.